Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are back once again with Magnus the Blue. I'm going to paint his armor red. So he can be Magnus the Red. But in true Mohawk Miniatures fashion, we're going to start it off by painting it blue. And then we're going to paint it red. You guys know how occasionally I do things the sound of really really weird and somewhat out there but it almost always works some of you will have seen me do something similar to this using green so you start off with dark greens work all the way up through light greens by adding yellow to it then adding white to it and getting yourself to a state where everything is super vibrant before you hammer down some red and what you end up with is a gorgeous gorgeous red if you watch this for long enough you'll see a kaitan in there where we've got some red elements and a, a wraith lord in there done the same way that's all well and good but i want to try something slightly different rather than going from a green up to white and then covering with red i'm going to go with some very dark blue work the blue up a little bit there's that kaitan go to white and then add in areas of yellow before we come in with the red. So it's going to be very, very different to how you guys have seen me do this before. And I think it's going to work. So on the deck, we've got some blue, some black. And we've just got some Signal Blue base, a nice dark blue to start with. We've got some yellow ink from FW. This is their lemon yellow. It's quite a pale yellow, but still got plenty of power to it. Some white ink from them. And then the final color will go down the Rouge Flamme or Flame Red. That's and that's how you doing, buddy? Let's get the compressor fired up and begin. These are all going to be painted gold. So I'm just going to pop them to one side, do all that afterwards. But this is all of the armor panels for Maggie. Now, there are going to be other bits that get added to this. But we've got the nipple horns to do. Um, what else is on here that needs to be. There's another set of horns that go on his head mask. They've got a little bit of a gold cuff on as well. So there's other elements to the armor panels that we'll end up doing. And on the wings, which I've put off to one side so that they are definitely out of the splash zone. You can see we've been working on those as well. So you've got most of one side of one wing done this evening. I had to stop and get my, uh, my bread shaped so it could go in the fridge again. Uh, but we nearly finished one of these wings this evening on the uh, the outside you see it's quite a large difference between the inside now and the outside just by having that highlight on those feathers just giving them all a little bit of shape mouth we've lost you already it's okay it's okay it will make sense in about an hour and three quarters when the red goes down between now and then, you're like, I don't get it, I don't get it. You said you're painting it red, and now you've got this weird, super pale yellow. What the fuck? It's okay. It's okay. Come inside, Bob. How you doing? So, let's just pop all this off so it's out of the way and get our blue started. We're going to give the whole thing a good coat of blue. Get our flow improver out. going to be needing a lot of this this evening, especially when we get to the stage with those inks. What up, dude? So you go six drops of blue, four drops of black. So it'll still be blue, but it'll be a very, very dark blue to begin with. And we'll work this up all the way to white as we go. Now, obviously, the biggest question is if you're painting it red, why don't you just start with dark red and then make it more red that's a good question and we could do that but the downside of doing that is if you if you just take a dark color and work up to a light color sometimes you don't get the depth that you want from something and I'm thinking that by following this formula, our recesses on the piece will end up being a little bit more purple. 
our highlights will be a very, very vibrant red. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking to replicate that sort of candy coat armor that you see on the 30k Thousand Suns just without doing a candy coat. Tony Spruce, thank you for that host, dude. Always appreciate that. I hate candy coat. I have an army that's candy coat blue. I've got a um, Alpha Legion styled Primaris force. Rival Sarah! How's it going, darling? Good to see you here, as always. Once again, we're doing something silly. We're painting red, but we're starting with blue. Go from black to dark blue to yellow to red. Almost. It's going to go black to blue. Then we're going to work blue up to bright white. Like, bright white. Then we're going to add some yellow over areas of that white. And then we're going to paint it red. So, there's a lot going on. It's going to feel like a lot of this is unnecessary. But when someone like Fish gets here later on, just ask him what the red is like on his Wraith Knight. And he'll tell you, that is a red like almost no other. There's a lot you can do by priming the mini. That's essentially what we're doing. We're not laying down an, an undercoat as such, I suppose. Uh, maybe, maybe that's the best way to describe it, is that we're laying down an undercoat that is different to what you'd expect. Just so you have a different red. And we're going to get a really, really good red out of this, I think. It's going to look fugly all the way through until that red goes down. Especially, especially when we get to the bit, we've got white and yellow on the mini. That's, that's going to look fucking terrible. But then that red will go down and it will all make sense. This makes make sense of my tough on the tough on the Yeah, that, that made no sense, especially writing it like that. Massimizes. It's been a long day today. This is probably not the best thing to do, but we had an interesting day testing. So that's always a good day. Got bread made. Ready to go in the oven tomorrow. That's always a good day. Tomorrow night, gonna make a lemon meringue pie. Oh, fuck yeah, that's my favorite dessert ever in the world. I love lemon meringue pie. Mrs. is cooking on Saturday. I asked if she wanted to bring anything. She's like, you can make dessert. I'm like, okay. If I'm going to make dessert, it's going to be the best dessert ever in the world. It's going to be lemon meringue pie. Could have just used Halford's red spray paint. Hey. Firstly, if I'm going to use spray paint on a miniature, it's probably going to be like Montana. Um, and I saw... So, so this is crazy, right? I watched the, um, not just Mecha stream where he used those sprays, and he used the Montana stuff there, and I'd seen it a few times before, and it looks really cheap. Like, really cheap. Four fifty a can. Yeah? Mentally, mentally cheap. I'm like, ah, oh, it must be shit. But then I find out, after watching Marco's video, that this is the stuff that professional um, graffiti artists use. I'm like, alright, so this has got my interest a little bit. He's using it on minis, and it looks pretty spot on. I'm like, alright, this has got my interest quite a lot, so we start looking into it. They have created a spray paint in a can that does marble effects. Marble spray paint. No. No. 
This is pretty fucking crazy. But I started looking into this. I watched a few videos on it. And I'm like, actually, this looks pretty good. This looks like it could do the job that I'd be willing to use it for. Hmm. So I'm going to do a massive amount of Necron scenery. They, they don't do a tartan paint, I'm afraid, no. No. And I figured, why not jazz it up a little bit and have marble Necron ruins? Because that would look cool. Indulged in an egg custard tart. I love egg custard tarts. I've got a buddy that's Portuguese, and that's one of like their sort of national desserts, I guess. He makes them, and they're banging. Uh, it, it is sourdough, absolutely. We've got sourdough pizza on the menu for tomorrow night. Mm. My pizzas are fucking banging. Gonna do chorizo, some honey roast ham. Uh, and some peppers. It's gonna be so good. Uh, Rob, crack your unicorn birthday cake. Uh, look, I'm sorry, mate. I don't care how good your unicorn birthday cake was. Lemon meringue pie is literally the king of desserts. I can eat entire pies, plural. I feel no remorse about this until the following day when there, there is definite remorse. It's like mashed potato. I can eat an almost infinite amount of mashed potato to the point where it actually hurts. But I'll continue eating the goddamn mashed potato because mashed potato is amazing. It's like that with lemon meringue pie. What, what can you do? What sort of is marble spray? It is marble spray. So like I said, it's, it's basically like silly string. You sort of spray it on and it just sort of splurts out all over the place. And then, bam, you've got marble. It gives you that random pattern that is what you're always looking for in marble. And I reckon I can pick up a couple of colors of that to do a pretty damn good red marble on elements of these terrain features. Or even just do like a black and white marble. Because between using spray paint and the airbrush to get different thicknesses of paint down, so more sort of translucent finishes with inks and stuff from here, I reckon I can bash out a really good table of scenery in a day. I reckon that's a possibility. Uh, you should try lime meringue pie. So I, I could deal with that. Big fan of like key lime pie and stuff. Mash, mixed with whole grain mustard in, banging. I mean, it's not quite 50-50 butter to, uh, to potato because it's butter, double cream, and salt go with potato. Mmm. Mmm. So good. That's right, fish. We're painting red. <laughs> We're not doing it like last time, no. <laughs> so we're going up with just some Signal Blue base right now. We're keeping this all really thin, as always. We're like one to one with. Uh, thinner to paint. Dolphin those potatoes. Mm, I like them, but if we're talking like the king of potatoes, aside from mash, then pomme de fan, fondant potato, like a good, a good fondant. Mm. Gotta love that. Okay, dude, we'll look at that later on. Kato Red. Kato Red's the shit, man. We're going to be using red ink on this, though. 
So this is the start of our red base coat. As you can see, it's a very, very dark blue. Now let's paint some blue. Now I warn you guys, this is going to look pretty terrible the vast majority of the way through. It's going to look like a great blue for a while. Then that blue is going to get a little bit too pale. And then eventually that blue is going to get basically white. And then that white is going to look a bit piss yellow. And then eventually it's going to look red. Dirty mash. Oh, good God, that sounds fucking great. <laughs> venison sauce, venison jerky, black truffle. I love truffle. Mm. Uh, it's, I haven't shaved this week, basically. We tried growing the moustache before, Polly. I don't know if you remember on the Necronathon, on day one, I was whinging about how much it was pissing me off. And I was like, determined to keep it. And I woke up day two after not much in the way of sleep took one look at it and just grabbed the razor and tore it off my face just dry shaved that that gone oh no the mustache is not staying can't do soup strainers we tried we gave it a really really good try this last time nope nope uh right i'm trying to remember which way these go these go on the inside of the wing this goes around to the back of the wings. This is the front. So we want the brightest points up here, which will be towards the edge of the wing, that front leading edge. And all we're doing here is going with like a, a very, very rough set of zenithals. That's all. We're leaving a little of the darker blue in as a, a good contrast, but this is too much dark blue. So we just come in and just wipe out some of that gently. Bring it up to a blue. Now these connect at that point, so then that becomes the top on the back part. Boom. Let's grab the other one of those so we don't get confused. Uh, so again, this one's this way around. This is going to be the brightest point. Start getting that blue down. Uh, so this process for red going to become super deep, dark toned red. It's going to be more purple in the recesses and very, very vivid red um, everywhere else, up to a bright red. Because when you put it over the yellow, that's what expected to happen. It's to self highlight ever so slightly towards orange, but not a lot. Still keep that definite red. But we're going for, let, let me grab a, a pick and I'll show you guys what we're going to try and emulate, but without emulation. So we're trying to get the feel of, rather than the effect of. Oh, it's Thousand Suns. Here you go, here's a, a GW, no, it's not a GW pick. Go on, have we got a official pick, which is a good net. Go on, let's get some candy coat 1K Suns. Here you go. So this is a candy coat style tiny picture. When you expand the picture, it's not meant to be small. Fucking useless. I hate Pinterest. That's the wrong thing to click on. Um, fucking Pinterest, it's just such wank. Right, there you go, that's kind of it, but that's not a good example of it. Bin this off. Uh, This is a, a really shit version. Like, that's not a good look for it at all. But this is candy coat red, okay? Basically what you do to get this is you paint a translucent red over something like gold. 
and the gold just about shows through enough to give you a very metallic red that looks super naff I don't know what that's meant to be um, here are, here's the, like, the official G-dubs extremely pixelated version we're going to take that but something that becomes useful and easy to highlight there you go there's a good picture yeah see how some of that is that weird dark purple the rest of it goes up to a, a red that's ever so slightly violet that's what we're going to give the effect of but that's not what we're going to do we could do that super super easy but it looks shit you can't highlight it properly the only effect you can do to it afterwards is a little bit of osl which as you can see there looks a bit cack um Sorry, Little Legend Commission Painting Studio, but your OSL's about half a job. And let's move on. Um, so we're not going to do that. We're not going to do Candy Coat Red because you can't do anything with it once you've got there. What we're going to do is provide something that has that kind of effect, I hope. Just quick FYI. I've never tried this before. This could all go completely to shit. So, we're on a wing and a prayer. Oh, I said it's object source lighting. It's where the miniature is providing a illusion of a light source. Or something in the frame uh, that does go that way up. Is making it look like there is a light source that the Ministry has been affected by. Uh, let's say it's red is suspiciously blue. It, it is suspiciously blue right now, mate. It's very blue. But don't you worry, man. We're going to finish this off on a real strong red. I hope. Like I said, first time I've done this. Really looking forward to it. Every now and again, I get weird ideas. You all know that by now. And this is the one that came to me on Tuesday. <laughs> so I put a lot of thought into it over the last two days. Uh, you know. <laughs> Pressure's on. Yeah, man. Absolutely. However, I think I've already put out some better versions of OSL for that. Also, I know that that particular artist does take commissions that are tabletop quality. Um, and so that was almost certainly one of those where it's a case of, I like, just want these done so they look pretty. I don't want these done so they look like characters. <clears throat> I know, man. I know, Fish. It's going to be September. So it gives us an entire another year, basically, uh, to save up for the bar bill. It's going to be awesome. Right. This bit's the important bit. As you can see, there's a lot of decorative stuff on Magnus' uh, body armor. We're going to be picking out a lot of it with gold, but we're not going to be doing gold armor with red accents. We're doing red armor with gold accents. There's going to be a little bit of gold added to it, not masses and masses. Not interested in that look at all. all right, what I'm doing here is I'm just going to edge highlight the top part of that armor. Um, just so we get a little bit more of a, a transition. I don't want to go from red to instantly purple. I do want to fade these through. There you go. That's all to be gold. Cool beans. Right, let's just flush a little of this out. We'll start adding in some white now. This is going to be where it starts to look 
really shit. Um. Oh, fuck's sake. Now I know your Twitch. Fucking Jamartin. Asshole. So, Malv in the chat. Cheers to you, mate. Because I didn't know it was you. <laughs> That's the only reason. Uh, he's coming round to mine on Saturday. We're going to be playing the first game for us both with new codexes. Don't expect me to remember anything. This this is a given. Yeah. Uh, so he'll be using Blood Angels, which is so strong right now. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a challenge, mate, without some of those strats and a psychic discipline uh, and the usual crutch that Blood Angels rely on of things like Upon Wings of Fire and Descent of Angels. Um, and I will be playing... I'll be playing... Necrons! Woo! Go Necrons! Also, it's been my first game against Jamartin and I'm super, super excited for it. Right. Like I said, this is going to be where it starts looking really terrible. Just making sure I've got the right consistency, which I don't want to add a touch of water into this mix. I found that when using inks, this makes things a lot better. Especially white ink. Flow Improver's great. You guys know I love Flow Improver. But there comes a point where it just doesn't add much more to what you're doing. Just that little bit of water helps a lot. Um, nice. Nice. If it turns out the Blood Angels just aren't going to cut you, mate, I'm happy playing like whatever Marines. Doesn't matter to me whatsoever. I just want to give them 40k. Uh, and to be honest, like regular Marines, I can't see them being like any worse than Blood Angels because Blood Angels just get extra stuff so Smithy holy shit I missed your, your name how are you doing dude it's been a long time indeed uh, I also haven't had so we ended up with this last week I can't remember who it was but we had somebody that subbed and it took about an hour and a half for that to come through Right, so here's where it's going to start looking terrible, like I said. As you see, we weren't lying about that. And all we need to worry about is making sure our transitions are quite smooth. We still want to retain a lot of that dark blue. That's going to be our darkest shadow. That's going to be where our purple elements start to come in on the mini. But we want to make sure as well that we just get a good set of values down for our highlights. Now we're going to work this up to pure white over probably two more passes. But as you can see, not red, not yet. Second subs is you. Yes, it is. It was you, Crooked Green. Had a butt ton of college work, mate. I totally, totally understand. It's got to be a bit of a shock to the system actually being back in now as well, rather than, you know, schooling from home. Hit these bird heads and get a good highlight on each of those. 
and then the top section of this bottom part of the leg plates as well. So you want to have a nice darker area here, re-highlight from there and go on down. And you can see we're being super aggressive with this, knowing that it's all going to be covered up. We've got a little bit of speckling, but that should be fine by the time we've gone to pure white, by the time we've got some yellow in here, and then of course we start getting that red down over the top as well. So a lot of this is just about gentle airbrush pressure, so small amounts of paint, plenty of air going through, being accurate with what you've you've got going on. As I said before, we're looking to keep this so we've got a really nice set of contrasts and to get our red really popping. Let's hit these bird heads up a little bit more. And this is going to be one of the areas that we apply some yellow to, for instance. We just want to get these as like the focal part of the leg armor. What model is this going to be? This is Magnus the Red, blue. He is an absolute beast, mate. You should definitely go and check out a, a full picture of him. Um, if you have a look on the Instagram post that I made just before we went live, you'll see kind of where we're at with the whole thing right now. And there's a lot that we've done, but there's still a lot to do. His base is enormous. It's the biggest base I've ever worked on ever because it comes off of a 100 mil base and it is a like full on diorama style display piece. Uh, massive shock, had no hobby time. Mate, I, I remember what it was like when I started doing like my A-levels and stuff. We went from GCSEs where it was a bit of a dot around to, shit, I actually have to do some work here because I don't understand some of what they're talking about. There you go. So what we're actually getting at the moment is that kind of um, like chrome effect blue. So you could use similar colors if you're looking to do something like that. Obviously, we're using this as a base coat to jump off of onto something super exciting. Uh, those are shoulder pads. So he doesn't have shoulder pads per se. He's got one shoulder pad, which is this bit. Uh, those two like long sections that we do with the, the four hooked um, bird faces on are his thigh pads. Uh, belt buckle, this is a like bracer he's got on one arm and one arm only. Um, and then... What else have we got? We've got the... The bits are in two sections. Go on the inside of the wing. So here's the outside of the wing facing the back. That's the inside of the wing facing front. They go into this section here. And so they're going to be red, which is why we're also going to be painting these bits here in red as well. So that helps keep all of that contained. And as you can see, we've got a lot of work being done on the outside of the wing so far. You can see where we stopped, unfortunately, before the stream started, uh, getting those feathers all highlighted. We've done that far on one wing takes a while there's a lot, of, a lot of very tiny very careful brush strokes being done there obviously and um, it's a bit of a process uh, no we're not going to turn Magnus red afterwards that's one of the reasons we are doing this though the blue start is because I wanted to make sure that this really really drove home that connection between the armor being red and Magnus being blue. So we're gonna get some of those tones coming through. 
which is going to give us something that's a lot more coherent. Would it look nice on a power sword? It would. Yeah, I've done many swords like this. Uh, too many sprues, whatever. Got some chipboard to make ruins for my light bases. A uh, chipboard? Really? Isn't that going to be a bit... I appreciate you doing rough ruins, but isn't that going to be a bit rough? Like a bit coarse? So these are his... Is it van braces for your legs, your shins? Shin guards! These are his shin guards. Got his football kit on, clearly. And these are a pain in the ass because we're going to have to gap fill some of this after it's been painted and repaint those sections. Which I could really live without, but we'll see what it's like when it's done. It might not be so bad. Uh, this is a commission, so this is for Rocky Balboa, one of the guys in the chat on a frequent basis. Um, and this was meant to be done in September, which was my month off. And uh, the, the reason why it wasn't was because I was trying to take the time off. We had um, no retreat in September as well, so you know, there's a lot going on. Uh, but the reason why I'm doing it is because A, it's Rocky, and Rocky has been someone that supported the chat for a long time. Like He's one of the old school uh, subscribers that we've got here. He's been around since pretty much day one. And uh, he's a fucking boss, basically. So he asked if I would do a commission for him. I'm like, yep, what do you want done? He said, Magnus. I'm like, okay, I can do Magnus. And then he said, you can paint it however you like. So I'm like, are you sure? Yep, however you want to do it, you do it. I'm not looking at him to go in an army. I'm just looking at him as a display piece. That's all I want. I'm like, if you're sure, here's what I'm thinking. Turns out, Rocky was like, you know what? That sounds fucking great. Just do it. Greaves, thank you. What's a fan brace? I know that's definitely an armor piece. But now I don't know which one it is. Nope, missed the entire half of his armor there. Notice how we're highlighting these towards the bottom. I like to do this. Vamrace is under armor. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, on leg plates, shin guards, greaves. I like to highlight the bottom areas so we end up with a darker section in the middle of the model. So it really helps you just amp up some extra contrast. It's a bit of a cheat, but it works. I need to do much more there. I need to come up just a little more. There we go. Uh, hate these spending loots to get free postage. Just almost bought a Keeper of Secrets just to avoid... What? No, don't do that. Dear, oh dear. I just created some new 40k widgets. I've sent you some. Would love to see you go nuts on them. Uh, what have you created? What widgets? Now, I know a lot of this area has got a big old bird skull on it. So being a little bit more... Uh, extravagant with that light blue than we would normally be doing, but Danbridge has got a forearm. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Cool. Way to go, learning medieval armor. Again, a lot of this is going to be covered up by the seating for his nipple horns. They're obviously going on. Got to do nipple horns. I don't care if people don't like them. They're brilliant. Magnus is uh, very sort of seminal illustration done by John Blanche. Nipple horns. Why would you not? I bet he's got a leather jacket with tassels on as well. You know. Right. 
not working into these areas. So we're being super, super careful with the amount of paint that we're using right now. Thank God for that, I thought I'd just touched that. It's a very, very, very small amount of paint coming through the airbrush. It's just coming out like dust. Once we've established some of that, we can just bring in a little bit more to build the power up in those areas. We want to get that transition across this tiny, tiny little plane. And then on here, obviously we've got the brightest point in the center of his armor. I'm just going to clean my tip a little as well. When you're using white uh, or bright colored paints through an airbrush, you'll frequently find that it dries out more on the tip, on those things. Uh, there's change your contrast. Do you uh, adjust the white balance of your monitor, I'm afraid, there's. want to get just between those two R panels a little darker area which is going to help us get that sense of shape show how light is interacting with it and make sure that we've got enough space here to really bring that through all of those blues all the way up to white, plenty of room. That highlight has got to be one of the most gradual ones that we've got on the miniature. It's going to flush a load of this out. Objectives, measuring widths, and three inch zone dial. Oh, sweet, dude. Is this on like a, an acrylic thing or, or what? What have you done? I'm looking for someone to be able to print onto neoprene. Um, somebody told me they could. And so I cancelled an order somewhere else because I wanted to get it done locally by somebody that I trusted. And unfortunately, um, it turned out that they then couldn't. So, we let that in. Which means there's still no Mohawk miniatures. Objective mats. It will happen. See, fish only do streams like this to fuck with you. What you don't know is that that Wraith Knight is actually green. We've just all fooled you. Did you find someone to print you a Nightbringer? No, we're, uh, we're actually not looking to get one printed. We're looking to get one designed. And I'm talking to two different designers at the moment uh, to make sure that they're the right fit for the project before I give them quite a lot of dollars. Um, whenever you, you hire any freelancer, it's important to make sure that they are going to be someone that you can uh, work with and sort of relate to. You want to make sure that they get you. Um, so just chatting to them uh, earlier on today, they live in different time zones. One's Sri Lanka, the other one I can't remember where, but it's sort of heading that way anyway. So, yeah. That's all right. Tell, tell your five-year-old halfway through a meal that what she's eating isn't fish, it's poop. So, brilliant. Brilliant. Jamar in 40K, I've got you. Uh, I need to change your meeps then. If you change your name, the bot doesn't recognize your new identity. So I'll do that in a bit. Send me a message on Discord with your old name and your new name. Well, you haven't got Discord, have you? Send me a message on WhatsApp with your old name and your new name and I'll transfer your meeps. Shot for like 20, wait. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. 
You're a real boy! So looking very, very, very desaturated now. We're nearly at white. We're going to do one more pass with just white after this. And then we've got the yellows to bring in. And that's where it's going to look really fucking weird. Do you think it looks weird now? Give it a... It's going to be super, super strange. It's all about just laying that foundation for the red. That's why we're doing this. But it's going to look horrible. Let's uh, change the exposure settings on here so we can start to see what's going on again. This red's going to look great. I hope so, dude. Like I said, this is something that I just randomly thought about the other day. And I wonder if I can do it this way. And uh, let's see what happens. If it all goes horribly wrong, we better recover. But I'm expecting this red to be pretty out there. The trick is going to be making sure that red goes on thin enough. It doesn't just turn the whole thing into one shade of red. So we have to make that red translucent rather than the opaque red that it currently is. Which we can do just by thinning it and then applying it as a thin coat. But that's going to be the point where it's most likely to fuck up. Is that point right there. All of this is just us putting down a value layer. Doesn't matter if this looks weird. We, we've already said many times this is going to look a bit shit. Until we get to that stage with the red, and it's going to look great. Nom nom. Oh, Jamartin, is there anything that you don't eat, by the way? Like I said, I'd do lunch, but... If you tell me you're a vegan, then... I've got some lettuce and some peppers in the fridge, and you could just live off of that. If you're eating dirty venison mash, I'd assume that you're quite far away from veganisms. Uh, weird blades he's got. It's got to be a little bit spiky. You know, flap your wing the wrong way. and right. Yeah, I know, mate, but things changed, right? That was, a, that was a year ago. I owe you a decent meal for looking after me there. Eat everything except frozen. Right, no one, no one should eat frozen spinach. Uh, Jaggy just missed us painting this red. Just doing um, Magnus's red armor. So 
so I've got a nice red going down on this at the moment. Um, really accentuating how bright this is. So it's going to go up to that sort of. It's going to look like candy coat red without us doing candy coat red. Frozen spinach is not a thing because it's fucking horrible. Because it's got absolutely no structure left in it and it's super limp with no real flavour apart from grit and dirt. Once you've frozen it, there's nothing you can do to it anymore to, to, to make it good. You're looking at being one of those horrible like spinach smoothies things. You peed off at spinach today, your so-called baby leaf sour spinach today because it's your bark, it was that old. Ugh. That's gross. The daddy. How you doing? Firstly, fish. I, I, I feel you should have shunned that back. Right. This is disgraceful. I don't think I have a second leaf. No, no I don't. It's okay, it's not okay. It's not okay. You replaced it with a steak pot. Done. Done. There you go, you've uh, discovered the cure for a salad. Steak pie. Beef short ribs at the weekend were fucking banging, man. That was so good. Finally finished the uh, the beef mixture off yesterday. Uh, what's your favourite model of all time from GW based on looks? Okay. Um, God, of all time. One of them is the old warp smith, the one that the painted iron hands. I mean, obviously, there's a slight reason there, but it always had like a green and purple, um, like tint to the silver armor. I fucking love that mini. That was done so well. That was an old paint job. Um, but that's up there. Uh, Ariel, the um, the Wood Elf centerpiece model queen. I think that's just fucking beautiful. I, I love that. That's that's so so good. Um, Tis says Nagash. Nagash is is pretty fucking sexy looking. Um, the turtle from the Ideneth Deepkin. That's one of my favourites. The Amble, another favourite. Uh, what else? What I really liked from the Eldar Warlock that was in metal, that had the sword and it was swinging it in. Um, really, really liked that one. That, that was just one of the best models in that entire range as far as I was concerned. Uh, the slightly OG Marnius Kalgar, the one in Terminator armor where he's got the fist up and the fist low, that, that was awesome. Um, the Dorito Dreadnought, I know a lot of people don't like it, those people are wrong, he's a beautiful thing. Um, what else? Yeah, I think that's that's kind of like my top ones. Love the Dorito. He's the ugly little duckling. Nobody liked him and he became a beautiful swan. Boat dreads. Yes. Uh, what do I do for work? So I am a software engineer. 
that specialises in quality assurance as my day job. And then during the evenings, I paint toy soldiers for people. And stream on Twitch. What about you? What do you do for work? Gosh, it's a bit like, who is your daddy and what does he do? Uh, what models do you want to paint that you haven't already? Oh, most of those. Most of the ones that I've just said, actually. That's why they're on that list, I think. Like, the unattainables. Um, Jay Galaxy old FW Venerable Dreads. Yeah. Yeah, they look cool. They're a little bit... You know. Dated now, unfortunately, because the box dread. It's just such a an iconic shape, but it, it does have a date firmly stamped into it, let's be honest. Uh, right, I'll get right in here. So again, super light air pressure. Well, paint pressure, I guess. Still getting full bore on the air. Just a small amount of paint. You see we've got that massive transition in that gap there, yeah? That's what we're aiming for. It was so rock and roll, you sell plumbing. Nice, man. All about laying that pipe, right? Somebody's got to do it, mate. Without you, I wouldn't have a flushing lav, so... As far as I'm concerned... Hero. Again, super careful on these little bits for his uh, obliques. Is that a muscle at the side of your abs? Obliques. I don't know, I haven't seen mine in about 10 years, so. Super bright in there. Gives us plenty of room to get the white in and then the yellow down on top of that. Now I'm going to flush the airbrush out entirely and rinse it right the way through. Get everything out of this guy. Screamer killers. They were great. There you go, Smithy. Woo! It's working now. Man, that red's great. I'm glad, dude. Give it time. Give it time. Fuck yeah. Big P on my chest. Um... Phrasing. We we'll go with phrasing. Definite phrasing. You're plumbing, man. Wait till Eric eats a banana. <laughs> the Saragon, that's, that's awesome. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, dude. That, that sucks. That sucks. But I'm super happy that you were super happy. Bertus van Heerden, thanks for that follow. Banana Man was a great cartoon. Yes, Super Ted never really got into. Um, spotty. Who was Spotty? I'm going to tissue. Do you mean Sooty? I can't remember any like old TV character called Spotty. Bodger and Badger, yeah. When I said about how I love mashed potatoes earlier on, I was waiting for this comparison to be made. You weren't here though. You're writing policy documents on information sharing with sponsorship clients. You're a developer, you write code, why? Fucking hell mate, somebody's gotta do all that sort of shit. Clearly, you're one of the only people qualified in your team. Look at it that way. Um, anytime I have to do like staff briefings and stuff. Oh, okay. And that makes sense. I didn't realize. It's been a very long time since I saw Super Ted. Uh, but yeah, 
like I have to do all the things like staff procedure documents and all that sort of shit, things to tell customers and everything else. Because none of the devs can do it because they can't write in that sort of style. Um, and if nothing else, if I'm honest, it gives me something to do because sometimes my job is just I've run out of shit to do, so it's just exploratory testing, which is the boringest thing. Ugh. Bertus, I, I am so glad. I am so glad. I nearly said afterwards, have I got that right? And then thought, no, I'm just going to wing it and hope I have. Spite a mohawk. Good lad. Good lad. So have a look. Did we get the right Kalgar come through on Discord? Uh, yes, almost certainly. Yep. Yeah, that's the one. That's that's the one. He's a fucking great miniature. Uh, oh, another good one. Terminator Chaplin. Terminator Chaplin. Fucking sick. Both versions of the mini. Absolutely sick. Um, Tony Spruce. That's awesome, but... I went to school with a kid who was called Matthew Corbett and his uncle was the Matthew Corbett and so anytime I went to his place there was Sooty Sweet, Sue, all of those like puppets fucking everywhere. As a dev the most insulting thing people ask me is can I install their windows? Brilliant. As QA, I just tell them that, you know, if it's not plain, then you should complain. If the instructions aren't clear, and it's not intuitive, you should probably just complain. Right, here we go. Pure white now. Looking for that splatter. We've got very little off of this. Perfect. I'm going to wipe out a lot of that light blue that we've laid down. Still leave a little of it, but you're going to be very aggressive with the white. Which is, give me a little bit of spatter, so. Ron meme you with grot bags. Yeah, I remember that. Does anyone remember Orville? I've got a fucking great Orville story. Um, Brendan Lord came to your house because he couldn't scan a document and send it by email and asked me if Java is difficult to learn. If he's having problems with that... Uh, I told a customer the only thing that was okay on their bike was a frame, but it had sentimental values and after 270 could repair to do. Shit, the bird. The nappy wearing bird. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Orville... And I forgot, was it Rod Hull? No, that was Rod Nemu. I've forgotten the name of the dude that was like Orville's, uh, we'll say handler, because why not? That's a, a good word to use. Um, well done. AJC and Strata, you guys are the shit. The absolute shit. Fish, too slow. Um, they were booked for my uni freshers week. And my what the fuck is this yesterday beach party love that as a fresher day before phone party oh yeah today Orville the fucking duck what is this Tenferg thank you for the following welcome to the stream but I'm working in the union bar so I'm going to end up being there all right, uh, that's fine, I guess. Oh, this is going to be such a shit night, isn't it? Comes out on stage. He's got the, the bird, obviously. And he's like, oh, wow, Orville, look at all these people. 
Keith Harris. Well done. Well done. And the bird sort of does a, a double take through the audience and then goes, fuck me, there's a lot of people here. Something about Orville swearing is hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. That foul mouth, little green shit, was the funniest thing that we saw all Freshers Week. I was done. I was absolutely gone at that point. Trap door. Trap door. Don't you open that trap door! There's something down there. That was amazing. I fucking love trap door. I had trap door episodes on VHS, not recorded from the TV, but that we bought. It was superb. So excited. Lack of headphones. Trapdoor was amazing. Bert Ernie and the Big Bad, I said no. God, that was, that was one of the best things on TV when I was a kid. Moomins gave you nightmare. There was one episode of the Moomins that freaked me the fuck out. I can't remember what it was. We had Timmy Mallet as well. Not at uni graduation, but Timmy Mallet was there in Freshers Week and some dude in the audience was constantly yelling at him, Timmy, did you shag Michaela? Right, of course he shagged Michaela. Like, wouldn't you? Um, you know exactly, right. It, was it the one with like a dark, it was like a ghost moomin or something, like a, an evil spirit moomin. That episode scared the shit out of me. Like, five-year-old me or whatever it was that was watching it, was just like, ah, nope. All I've got now is these fucking gigantic staring eyes. I'm like, no. So now you get eight year olds watching Hostel. Mm. Oh, it's funny, isn't it, mate? No. Anyone watch the X Files when they were a kid? Because Eugene Toombs was fucking terrifying when I was a teenager. Like, that, that properly had me a little bit like. No, 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 no. No. Oh, Gillian Anderson. Yes. Yes, that was a great reason to watch The X-Files. But fucking tombs. Nope. Nope. Yeah, it was the guy that could, like, um... Smithy, peace out, dude. Great to see you again, man. Thanks for dropping by. I hope college is going well for you, all right? Uh, but yeah, he he was like, no. How the fuck has a seven-year-old even seen Five Nights at Freddy's? That's the thing with... Um, oh, shit, was it Tom Green? The guy from Road Trip. Unleash the fury, Mitch! Unleash the Fury! Which I think of every single time I fight Endless Fury. And I don't think anyone's ever gotten it. Team out has cycled 11,000 kilometers this year. I've got no words for that. But thank you for sharing. Anyone else got any random Timmy Mallet facts? Oh, Jesus Christ. That's just weird.
But yeah, Tombs, that, that was a scary one. And then they, they did one, which still fucking haunts me to this day. Um, uh, Angel of Blood, yeah, man. Give us a few minutes to get through this, and we'll have a, a quick sort of preview through the rest of it if you want. Um, but let me get all this white down before we have to transition up to yellow. And then we'll have a quick showcase. Uh, there was one where they had a doll. And the doll was clearly sentient. This is this is a no from me straight away. Uh, fucking like ventriloquist dummies and like porcelain dolls. Creepy as fuck. Creepy as fuck. Uh, and we had this doll, and if you pissed off the girl who had, who was like the owner of the doll, or you, you did something bad to her or whatever, then the doll would absolutely like shit all over you. It would make you do things to yourself. So at one point, this girl's mum was hitting herself in the face with a hammer. That bit, that's not so bad. But the doll makes this fucking, like, uh, pre-recorded sign. It just goes, let's have fun every time, right? No. No. I just love when Skinner started to believe and Cancer Man was in the way. Uh, yeah. Street Hawk. Holy shit. God, an Airwolf. One of the coolest soundtracks to any TV series. It's a very bad rendition of it, obviously, but Airwolf was absolutely tits. Jessica Jones episode, oh mate. I, like, so I watched that for the, the very first time was when it came out. And I was watching it with my missus, who obviously now is my ex. And uh, as soon as she found out it was Kilgrave, I was like, oh fuck no. And just the thought of it being him was enough to make me think this is going to be really really horrible uh and flick my ex was like i don't get it i don't get it like just this is about the worst villain you could ever have uh played really well by david tennant though like fair play he did that really really well um yeah i remember the spores Wait, that was the, the green spores. Oh, that was a different set of spores then. They had one that was green spores in a forest. I remember that one. And at the end of the episode, Mulder and Scully were in their car. Um, and they just managed to survive through the night. And they'd been slightly cocooned. I remember that one. Git face, absolutely. It's like, no, no. There's absolutely no redeeming side to him. No, he is literally the worst of people. Uh, but again, played extremely well. I right, can't can't fault him for that that rendition. That acting was was spot on. Uh, right, three more sets to do with the white, and then we'll have a quick run through of Maggie. We've done lots of work on him. We're not finished by a long shot, but we've done lots of. And we've got some yellow to do through the airbrush after this as well. Then we start getting the red down. The Jocinator! How you doing, man? You was the one with a lich like parasite during a tropical storm. I don't remember that one. I don't remember that one at all. 
Also, I don't think I saw any of the Robert Patrick ones. I might have seen one or two, but I just don't remember any of the episodes that had him in it. I remember his name was John Doggett or something like that, so I must have seen at least one to remember that. Tip again. Uh, twin. Oh, oh no, that oh fuck yeah, that was that was pretty gross. Yeah, Polly, I remember that one now. Yeah, there's some gross shit on that on that show, but you know that's why we watched it. Nearly done with white on these. And then the yellow is something that I've not done before at all, but I'm hoping it's going to really add to the punch and the vibrancy of our red. So what the white is going to do is allow the red to be like its reddish red and its truest version of the red that we're putting down. What the blue is going to do is give it an ever so slightly purple side to it and help us have some contrast. But what I really, really want is the yellow to make parts of this red. Not just be the reddest version of that red, but to pop. Like to jump out of the miniature at you. And really fucking sing. That's the plan. Alright, chest piece, last piece. And then we'll have a quick overview of Magnus the Blue. Before we do the yellow. Uh, save the chili to save the world. Heroes. God, I did watch that. Uh, mostly because it had Ali Lata in, who at that time of my life I was completely in love with. Ali Lata was the um, the blonde lass that had like the schizophrenic thing going on. There you go, Iowata Eclipse HPCS. I love how you guys know my setup. Boom. So that is obviously some extremely, extremely bright to dark blues that we've got on here. And that's gonna have a massive effect on our red. So let's just flush the airbrush out while we go through the Magnus show. Tony Spruce. Peace out, dude. You take it easy, mate. Oh, Crown Blade, that was horrible. That was... Ugh, that was sickening. So, I decided when we started the project that Magnus was going to be very reminiscent of the old school Magnus from Epic Space Marine back in the, I'm going to say super early 90s, because I fucking loved that mini. He was great. So he had the Cyclops head, that had to be part of it, um, and he had to be blue with ginger hair. That was, that was it. So as a result, Magnus himself is currently 
in uh, action figure mode, looking a lot more blue than that armor is right now. But all of this is done. We've got the feathers. I've just got the base coats down. We've got to get all of our pearlescent uh, paints in there before we go any further with that. And that'll be all we done brush blended. But the skin's all finished off. We've got all the highlights in there. All the plugs are done. The claws and talons just need an extra highlight or two. But I'm waiting until I've got in around all of these areas and do the whole lot at once. So that's the body of Magnus. We've got Maggie's face looking very focused in. Oh, Lee, you're the one to talk about a lovely blue, mate. Your worldie is sexy. Uh, we've got the hair of Magnus, the gigantic mane of gingerness that is super ginger. I mean, look at that. That's really, really powerful. A lot of that was done with inks as well. Did a slightly um, different methodology on painting that. We did a lot of values with black and white and then brought in the red and the orange. This is the Sword of Magnus, which is one of my favorite parts so far. I went with the sword rather than the big old stick because I think it looks better. And it gave me this massive area on the blade to do. We've got two different um, like competing energies melding together. Oh, such a fan of this, such a fan. Still what that side to do. Uh, and then the wings we've started on as well. I'll just show you the one which you've got the furthest on. So we did a load of uh, very vibrant colors underneath, desaturated that with a white filter over the top. And I just started coming in now and just highlighting all of these feathers. All got to be done individually, which means this is taking a while, but you can see it's really starting to marry together those colors and make that rainbow that we've got there super, super seamless. So by the time you've got these mother of pearl wings coming out from around Magnus, you've got the blue skin that's very vibrant, you've got this red, almost candy coat armor going down. This guy's gonna look sick. And then he's going on a base, which is sculpted by Damien Pedley. Look at this, this is something out of Labyrinth. All right, we've got a little plinth to go here, which is a Little burning uh, orb. There's so much still to do, but oh, oh my god, so so good. Uh, Sarah, it, it's light and day. Yeah. Everything looks finished until you realise it's not finished, and even the ones I've highlighted aren't finished. I need to get that was a, a, a white ink over, which is semi-translucent. And then as soon as all of those have been done, they come in with just some Moro White from P3. Take that and just do the middle uh, like spine of the feather and a tiny like um, chevron at the bottom. Done. Th that will be absolutely spot on there. Right, now we're going for the yellow. This is the risky play. So we've gone black, up through dark blues, up to white, so far in all the armor. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some yellow ink from Dalarani and make this look really, really weird. This is lemon yellow. And what I'm hoping that this will do is give our red some real, real power on these highlights. So we're just going to hit areas of this white. I'm not going to do the whole thing. This is to give it that little extra shine, a little extra pop. So we'd be doing ourselves a disservice if we did the whole thing. Because we wouldn't have any of that variation. So you can see there's those yellow dots on there now, right? Camera's blowing us out a little bit because of the white, because it's a little bit wet still. But this is going to be, I think, what absolutely makes this work. However, right now, as you can see, it's fucking weird. Uh, Ultramine Terminator, how you doing? Uh, yeah, let's, let's get real dark so you can see exactly where we're at with this. It's not right, let's be honest. It's, it's not something you would normally do. 
But then again, a lot of the stuff I do kind of breaks rules a little bit. And this is a pre-shade, remember, as well. This is just to get red to be really, really nice. But it does look freaky. I do love doing shit like this, though. Where you take something that is completely, absolutely batshit insane of an idea and just push it as far as you think it can go. I like pie. How you doing? Awesome, dude. Good to hear. Welcome to the stream. We're painting red. In a minute. Tell you what though, I'm kind of liking that blue into yellow. It's weird, but it looks like something from a video game. Right, let's get these leg plates. So on these, just gonna take some of that area at the top. This point here. Some of this area, not all of it. So it's fine edges. And then the beaks. God, that looks fucking strange. Did he go the pink to yellow? Everyone's been trying. Oh, mate, I've been doing that for years. Um, I've got an entire Nurgle Demon army behind me that was uh, undertones of pink, green, and scarlet, and then yellow ink over the top of it. Um, my golds, for instance, are pink gold, and then I'll wash it purple, wash it with a flesh wash, and then highlight back up using gold, like on those custodes. It, it, it's a brilliant thing. Like red over green works very well. This is an evolution of that. Um, you know, I've sort of been there and done it with the reds and greens before. I thought we'd try something ever so slightly different to achieve a similar effect. Um, but just color theory. If you grab a, a color that is diametrically opposed to something else and use it as a base coat for that other thing, so pink and yellow, it really works. Uh... <laughs> uh, Angel of the Blood, you will have to fight my uh, my client for it, I'm afraid. And he really wants this, so... I'm, I'm afraid you might be shit out of luck. My client's one of the guys that's been in the stream and supported me since the absolute start. Um... Love the guy. He's an absolute stand-up gentleman. Total boss. And so... We're going the extra mile on every single part of this. N none of this is, like, just done as... Meh, it's, it'll do. Everything is done to the absolute best that we can make it. That's why we've gone the extra mile and got custom base sculpted by another person, because it's... It's something that I'm not particularly great at. Um, is sculpting. So, uh, Rocky's going to be very happy with this when it's done, I'm sure. Everyone loves the sword. Everyone loves the sword of change. So far, that's two streams worth of work. Uh. I love it. If you go above five grand, oh, 50 grand. I mean, 50 grand, sure. Yeah. Yeah, Rocky will understand. I'm 
In fact, he's about to have a baby. Like, if I split it with him, I'm sure he'd be welcome with it. <laughs> he uh, actually puts burning buildings out with puppies. And I don't mean, like, uses them and sort of slaps the heat out. But I mean, he trains puppies to put out fires. That That's how much of, like, an ubermensch she is. I'm actually not like unhappy about this color scheme. I wouldn't do it on Magnus, but I might use these colors intentionally on armor at some point. It's a little bit like instead of if you didn't do candy coat and did uh, like regular acrylic paints for a, um, oh, what are they called? Her Salsero with a big old cheer. Dude, thank you very much. Good to see you, man. Um, oh, what are they fucking called? Alpha Legion, if you did Alpha Legion, but took it to its absolute extremes and didn't do candy coat, this is kind of what you'd end up with. weird. It's not bad. Nearly done. Two more of these, and then we can do the red. I did say earlier on, about an hour and 45 minutes. We're at an hour and a half now. It was a good guess. It was a good guess. Uh, puppies make terrible firefighters. Their hoses go flailing everywhere. I mean, you've got to you've got to house train those puppies first, clearly. And then you have to drink a lot of water. You've got to keep that dog bowl really, really full. And then you'd be surprised at what a puppy can put out. The only downside to it is every time it puts out a small amount of fire, you've got to pat it on the head. Like good dog. So you know, could easily see it for nids. Oh yeah, yeah, like uh, some undersea starred nids, like angler fish, kind of nids. That would work. That would work. But you share my uh, my love of super bright and vibrant colours. Like your tau are extremely, extremely bright. Like you've put some work in. On the average of those. Um, question: What if I want to run a white scars? I don't want to paint them white. Is that okay? Yep. Just like has been said, just paint them as whatever you want, and then say they're a successor chapter. And depending on whether you're playing at tournaments and how strict the tournament is, and I only know of two that are this strict, um, you might be able to just say that they are white scars rather than having to use the inheritance of Primark and all the other bollocks that comes with it to make them actually white scars. Um, you say some people give you shit, but there are rules for successor chapters of, and you could just take that inheritance of Primark thing if, if it's like friendly games. You use your Blood Angels white scars? Mate, I, I imagine there's going to be quite a few red angels or, uh, sorry, red scars, blood scars? Blah. Can't hear every stream anymore. My new job involves waking up early, but I'm lurking up as I can. I hope you and the chat are well and you get your oh shit. Uh, and you get your at the end of the year. Wait, what? I get my what? So I'm married since last week and the brewery goes awesome, dude. Congratulations. Fucking let's get some hype and some love in the stream for Hustle Cero. He got married. I'm positive it will last longer than mine. You've got this, brother. Congratulations, big congratulations. 
I will, of course, toast you with my... Uh, Mm. Welcome to the pain. I mean, can I confirm nor deny? Just don't fuck it up, it's really expensive, okay? <laughs> Fish, you got married on twin. tell us holy shit fish congratulations to you as well right this is either gonna work or be fucking terrible we'll see uh, the character of every marine army painted up with blood angels for my salamanders because they actually built an army. Nice, dude. Fair enough, fish. Fair enough. A seven year engagement is. I, I feel you got the most out of try before you buy. I've just realised actually what this colour scheme reminds me of, and it's a pair of Nike trainers that somebody I know has got. No, they're not Nikes. They're Etinies. Etnies? Whatever they are. This is what they look like. Blue and that obnoxious yellowy green. You see it's red finished. It'll, it'll happen, dude. Uh, beer is what I get. Dude, so looking forward to it. Your Instagram always makes me ever so slightly jealous. Yours and Voodoo Yaz, who I haven't seen here in ages. He's always on the stouts. And he managed to pick up one that I missed a boat on from Brewdog recently, which is a, a Mexican chocolate stout. Oh, God, that sounds so fucking delicious. Super, super delicious. Right. Banging. So now we need to really clean the airbrush out. So the back, back flow it a little bit. Just get everything out of the nozzle. Give it a good wipe down on the inside with some tissue. We'll be fine. Almost I am done. Uh, yeah, sort of. Sort of. Obviously, we're getting some green come through on our yellow because we're using lemon yellow, which is already a little bit um, paler than regular yellow anyway. It doesn't have quite as much punch to it, and it's going over blue. So there's going to be a little bit of that, that that happens. It's been working a lot on knackered from what I gather. So not surprised, dude. But... Say hello to him for me. Well, I spoke to him on Insta quickly the other day. It's a good dude. If I have something painted as a Christmas present, hit up Instagram or Discord. Um, mate, I'm really, really sorry to say this, but I'm not in a better fit it in. Uh, I'm already booked up till way past Christmas. Um, Christmas 2021, may maybe. I've got a Dark Angels commission sat behind me, which was done before they were cool. You know, this is for Nick McDade. Everyone knows Nick is the uh, super Dark Angels player in the chat. Best Dark Angels player in the world, or he was until everyone's going to jump on that bandwagon and it's going to be a little <whistles> for him. Um, <laughs> never mind. Um, so. We've got that to do. Then we've got the Void Dragon and a Silent King to do, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, and then after that, I've got a YouTuber's uh, 
add army to do. I know you said what faction it was then. I managed to just stop myself. Uh, so we are we are booked. Uh, can I get your thoughts on a Death Guard list using Plague Marines with close combat weapons and grenades in Rhinos with Land Raider and the rest of the points in Blight Lord Terminators? Why Rhinos? Why Rhinos? Don't take Rhinos. Rhinos are great, especially if you give them disgusting resilience. Do you know what's better than a Rhino? Fish is thinking, a Spartan! A Spartan! And I love the Spartans. The Spartans are amazing. And those heavy bolters just got super good. But termites... They're super good as well. Th those... Those termites, man. They're, they're really good. PBCs are great, but you can't transport anything in them. Uh, in that case, then, the, the best place is usually Discord or Instagram. It doesn't matter. Um, but I'm just, I, I can't take anything else on. So the termites are better than the rhinos because, A, they deep strike. Just straight up. Yeah. But they've also got, like, eight melters on them. No, four. I think it's four melter shots on them. And in close combat, they are scary. Really, really scary. Oh, Jermaine, trust me, I know Death Guard can foot slog. But the man's looking at a mechanized list with rhinos. So just trying this red out on the wet palette. Sorry, on the. Well, I guess it's usually my wet palette. It's this corner of the chopping board. And it's got good coverage over all of this. I think we're going to be okay. We're going to work on a big focal point, though. We'll do one of the, uh, the leg guards first. So what we've got now is we've got some flame red, more FW ink. Super good. I want to paint all of this red now. So we've just gone through all of that just to paint over it. Let's see what it looks like. So it's got to be super thin. So a two to one flow improver to ink. Okay. Ink being about the thinnest fucking thing you could paint with ever anyway. And there's two parts flow improved and one part ink in all of this. Oh, will you look at that red! Oh! Let's just... And you need to make sure that every single part of this is covered. There's no pinks, there's no blue. Do the other part, then I'm gonna dry it down with a hairdryer. We're gonna get an, a matte varnish hit it with that because these inks especially the amount of flow improvement we put in do dry a little bit on the glossy side I just want to knock that gloss all the way back down and then we'll take a, a brief pause and check this out up close the fucking look at that red Uh, Black Magic Crafts is great, but what was the question? DIY Terrain. Yes, definitely go and check him out. He's fucking brilliant. He's an, a super nice dude as well. That. That is some red. Rev! 
brother. Long time no see. We're getting all the old schoolers coming out tonight. I'm loving this. This is red as fuck. This is so red. You got red on you. A bit. You're not solving it currently. Oh, dude. Dude, just you wait. I think it's just banging red. So we're going to take out the gloss by giving it a matte varnish. I'm also going to just put the key, um, what do you call it, the exposure back to normal. Just using air to cool down the mini after hitting it with that hair dryer. So we pop this back up to regular rather than super dark, which is what we were on. That's a good red. Hit it with some dull coat. In fact, I have red hair. I'm practically already Magnus. Do you have more than one eye? How can you not love that red? That is such a fucking baller red. Obviously, we've got loads of detail on this to pick out afterwards. You know, we get some actual brushed washes on here. But this is hella red. Let's just put this leg armor just against Mr. Blue. Look at the, oh. There you go. Age of the Blood, honestly, mate, what it come down to was the fact that the application of this wash, this uh, ink, sorry, is very, very glossy. And because of that, you end up with not seeing enough of it through the camera. So you just got to take that down with some matte varnish. And that's the question that was just asked in chat. I use Tester's Doll Coat almost all the time when it comes to a matte varnish. This shit is legit. It will never frost. It will never have any issues. I have gone through, I want to say about 20 odd cans of this in my time. It's so good. I buy about a dozen at a time because I use it on everything. Right, speaking of everything, let's just go through it. We'll carry on using the... Uh, the leg plates. So here's, here's the interesting part, right? You start laying it down over this and you've got that kind of orange and purple. Look, there's an ever so slight brown that appears before the red just starts building up in enough of a layer to tint everything one shade or another of red. You've got to go slow. As soon as you uh, take your eye off the ball a little bit, you end up with too thick of a layer. And you undo all of the work we just spent an hour and 45 minutes doing. Uh, don't be taking care if you hit the battlefield in that armor, mate. You can't hide Magnus anyway. He's Magnus the Bullet Magnet. Yeah, Testers is, is legit, honestly. I've, I've used a couple of different spray varnishes from different companies, never used Games Workshops as a pile of wank um, because I don't sell it. And because I don't sell it, it sits on a shelf. And believe it or not, spray paint actually has an expiration date, especially on something that's like a clear coat. Um, it will mist, it will fog, and it will ruin miniatures. 
Uh, so no one should ever use GWs. Uh, their new formula is apparently better and doesn't cause this issue, but I'm not, I just can't trust it. Whereas this, I use this on customers, commissions, I use it on competition miniatures, you know, you name it. But look at the difference between where we are here with the gloss, where it's obviously wet, but also has that glossy effect. And here where we're not. Fucking night and day again, right there. Mm. Mm. Uh, if you say so, but I'm never ever going to trust theirs. Ever. Not after some of the disasters that I've had of it. And, and there are ways of dealing with it. You can uh, spray it with a gloss varnish and then remat it afterwards and other things that you can do. My point is you shouldn't have to fight the product for it to do what it says literally on the tin it should do. So, I'm never using the GW ones. The testers ones are amazing. I've got a couple of suppliers I can use in the UK to get hold of them. Uh, and like I say, I buy like six or 12 at a time. When I get down to about three left, I'm like, right, it's time to get more. It's super important to me. That and Flow Improver is basically what my business runs on. Fucking look at that red. That's so nice. Look, it's that little orange tint that we get at the very, very top parts of this that that yellow is allowed us to have all the way down to a sort of quasi brown purple element to it. By the time we get some brushed washes on there, hit those recesses a little bit. It'll look the jam. Clearly raspberry jam, because, you know, red. Yeah, make sure you hit every part of this. Love it. Fucking love it. All these little um, geometric shapes to do on these as well. I really like the halfway point where you've kind of got orange and purple. That's kind of nice as well. Oh, nice, dude. Nice. I don't use spray primer at all anymore. Um, I've had some bad ones. I've had some where they've been either so pressurized that the word control is used as a suggestion, not an option. Um, and I've ruined a couple of, of minis, unfortunately, just by priming because of that. Uh, and I'd like to think that I know what I'm doing when it comes to painting a miniature. And certainly when it comes to just priming something with a rattle can, I must have primed I think I'm exaggerating when I say 10,000 miniatures after time working at G-Dubs and everything else, you know. You used to have to prime people's miniatures. If they, if like little Timmy came in, we used to have to go and prime his uh, his mini. How many hours? Oh, like a hundred. Easily. There's so much work to do, mate. Uh, I'm not making minimum wage on this by far. Put it that way. So... Yeah, get to pick up some of that um, Montana spray to do some scenery with. Definitely going to check out their spray marble. That's intrigued me. If that means I can get a table's worth of marble terrain done in a day, then yeah. Okay, I'll get on board that hype train.
I really like that. That's kind of like a little sunset that we've got going on. You know, those beautiful multicolored skies. That's really just cute. He powered us through to the red. God damn. Yeah, I don't think I've used a spray can to prime anything that wasn't terrain at all in the last five years or so. Everything's been airbrush. Just prefer the control. Um, and the fact that if I want to do a different colored primer, I can just make it. Uh, gonna start working my thousand suns models in a few minutes. Can't wait to share pros in a bit. Awesome, mate. Awesome. Do you know see studio guys? What's your thoughts on their work? I do. Uh, so personally, as in to speak to just on a random regular basis as a friend, um, I know several uh, because it's a small world, um, and that includes people like James, who's the owner. And I think that some of their work is fantastic. And I think that some of their work is the other end of that scale. Um, but I can say that about almost any artist, and certainly any commission painter, everyone's got times where they go right into something super deep, and it is the best thing ever. And times when you're like, look, this is what the client wants and it's shit and it's because of their colour scheme. Um, now I am in a very fortunate position with my business that I can turn down work whenever I want. Um, but I don't have 20 artists or so to keep busy, whereas James does. So it, it's also those people that are, are working for Siege, for a lot of them, if not all of them, that's their full-time job. Uh, in fact, I know it's not all of them because one of my friends that works there, I do know, has a, a full-time job on top of. But he's like me. He likes to, to work. He likes to be busy. He likes to paint. This is his relaxation time, his painting. Uh, but yeah, every commission studio has stuff that they put out and you're like... Oh, you phoned that one in. Um, but equally, they've also got stuff where the client's just like, look, I just want a basic job done. We're paying for, like, medium level. You know? That's, that's one thing I don't like is, is students that have levels of stuff. I don't have levels. I have. You want to get what it's going to look like. It's going to look banging. Um, because something I learned as a chef is that you're only ever as good as your last meal. And I feel the same is, is true for any creative industry, whether it be food-based or... You know, this. Um, so as a result, I try and do everything to a high standard. Not like Golden Demon standard, you know. No one would ever afford what I was painting, but certainly to a, a very high standard. No corners cut, everything done, detail oriented. Um, Rocky, yeah, like reaction make Jay makes when his client doesn't ask him to, to dry wash or use no oil, yeah. It's all good, dude. It's not cheap, is the other thing as well. Like, any any time you, you do a commission, you get what you pay for. Um, when I started out, my prices were about half of what they are now. Because they've got to be, to begin with, you've got to... You, you have to build a portfolio, you have to build that client base and so on. Uh, and my prices now, I feel are fair for the work that I'm doing. Just that. Look at that. You know what? I think we're going to actually use this colour scheme exactly to, to this point for his robes. 
because that's fucking beautiful. I love that. The yellow, the pink, the blue, the purple, the orange. Uh, Rocky, this probably won't win a Golden Demon. Mostly because one of the first things that they, they ask is like, have you painted this miniature? So just practicing getting it to that midpoint now. Just so I can do it on his robes. Something like this bit's a little too. I really like that. I really, really like that. Um, I was probably going to do his robes white. Might not be. Might do this instead. making sure we hit all of these angles whilst most of this if not all of this will be hidden by the fact that that's where it attaches to the body the last thing you want to do is put everything together and realize that you can actually see a little part of a panel that's one of the worst things right i'm just going to go back through every part of it just check for any areas where we've missed a spot we don't have red and we've got whatever other colour is showing through. A little bit right at the top there that was kind of more of a magenta. I'm doing all this before we do our varnishing to ensure that if we had to do any cleanup, it's over the same value layer, the same paint, the same formula as what we've just done. If we had to go over this with the uh, the testers on it as well, we'd probably get the same finish, but it might not be perfect as the same. So, oh Rocky, I I, I know, I absolutely know. Did it ask your client about the robes? I don't need to. My client just said, paint it however you like. If you've got something you'd like me to do, let us know though, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do, do whatever you like. <laughs> Very much. It's all good, bro. You do you. Worst part about commissions that work for hire is clients. Clients are the worst. They don't like being told their ideas are dumb. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. They, they don't. Um, I have flat out told people, sorry, mate, that sounds shit. I don't want to do it. Um... A again, the, the larger company that you are, the less you can do that because you rely on reputation obviously quite a lot. So I, I know artists that work for studios, I won't name the studios, um, that have had awkward conversations with clients and said, look, can I just do like one mini the way I think it should be? And you can tell me whether you like it or not. Um, and then sometimes they've then had to like redo a mini and, and do what the client wants and sometimes it looks shit uh, because most people have no real idea of, of what a fish product is going to look like they've just got like this weird thing in their imagination of like yeah it'll look great you know? 
what I really want is uh, black power armor with um, gold trim. Sounds good so far. It's all right. Um, and then I want glowing green eyes, but I want them like Vallejo scorpion green. Super, super, super bright green. And also the pipes on their armor and all of the, like, the soft bits inside. All of that super, super bright green. Sorry, I was completely with you until you said you want his armpits bright fucking green. That's a conversation a friend of mine has had to have with a client before. Fortunately, the client saw the light and the light was not bright green. And um, the artist managed to sort of win that one back. It was still done in greens, but way, 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 way darker. Oh, just there's literally dregs of that red left in the airbrush. That was perfect. Fucking perfect. Uh, Rocky, yeah, totally. I'd like lime green murder on it, please. Fuck that noise. Fuck that noise. Uh, I thought so as well, but we've got it. It was just in here. Oh, we've managed to get that. Right down here, it looks a little... Oh, holy shit, that was a big cheer, man. Dude, peace out. Again, congratulations. Absolute congratulations on your new pitals. Best of luck to you for the future, man. Uh, new orcs, many new orcs are your voucher. Spellcraft orc heads and bigger bases than we pick up. Nice, dude. Very nice. Rocky, peace out, brother. You liking the red? Here's one of the reds that is varnished down, so it's not so glossy. Slightly satin appearance, but. That is some red. Mm. Considering this is one of those like random thoughts of like, I wonder if. Just come out alright. Take it easy, brother. Right. I'm going to leave the compressor going so we can get the gold out in a sec. Just going to varnish all the rest of this now. By the way, guys, make sure you do this in a well ventilated area, ideally, whilst also using some sort of mask, respirator face protection this stuff is really bad for you as always I've got both of your doors open and if I was off stream I would have a mask on what red paint is it laser cotton honestly you're gonna have to watch the VOD you're gonna have to because it's been about an hour and 45 minutes of painting blue Yeah, this, this has been a very, very different way of painting red. But the actual red was ink, acrylic ink, rather than acrylic paint. Uh, it's Dala Rowney's FW Ink. And the one we were using was their Flame Red, which is super, super good. I've got gloves that are completely covered in varnish now. Strong protection. What paint brand do you use? Sit up. Oh, mate, are you? <laughs> do you use some premium dank Kush shit, brother? 
when it comes to paint, I'm a bit of a whore. And I will use whatever is best. Because there is no single company that has cracked every single pigment. Someone's going to argue that Chimera has. And yes, they'd be technically correct. But not really. Um, so I use a lot of GW paint. But it's specific ones. So Flash Gets Yellow, Celestial Grey, love that. A couple of their um, like odd tones for that sort of thing. But the majority of what I use is P3. P3 make some banging, banging paints. Some of my favourites. They, they're very vibrant, they're very powerful, and I love that. Also, use copious amounts. of scale 75 especially for metallics their metallics are dank super super good we got viking gold dwarf gold and then my own mix here of dwarf gold and vallejo silver and these are some of the best golds absolute love for these we're just going to do a little bit of gold on there before we go into the whip, which will be very soon. So, exclamation point Discord, if you've got something that you've been working on and you would like to show off, go post it in Discord. Let's see what you've been doing. No more than three pictures per person, because I hate skipping them. And I always want to make sure that everyone's got their fair shout. So, you know. Do you think about Vallejo colours in general? I think they're not as good as P3. But I use some of... like There's a couple of Vallejo colours that I use on almost every mini. One of them is one of my favourite paints ever. It's appeared on Magnus on the sword. And will probably appear on Magnus's base. And probably on his cloak as well. Sunset Red... Vallejo model colour, this this is absolutely one of the best I love it uh, Coffee Mouse uh, your new hobby, can you recommend a white that isn't set or chalk? Yes, absolutely um, Morrow White from P3 this stuff is amazing as an acrylic white paint also Dalarani FW White I use their semi-opaque. Yeah. This, it, it, it's white. It's it's actual white. Both of these are fucking brilliant. The GW one is a pile of wank. Just wank. It's no good at all. Um, so yeah, I, I know that I shit on a, a few GW paints well, I shit on the majority of GW paints. Um, I do use a few of them, though. I don't use any of their metallics. Their metallics are absolute dog shit. No one should use Games Workshop metallics. I don't care how good you think Lead Belcher is. Fuck off and get Vallejo Model Air Gun Metal. Or Vallejo Metal anything from their range. Don't use GW metallics. They're all absolute bollocks. They do one gold, which I want to say is Retributor Armor, which is decent. It is decent. Um, but scale is better. It, it just is. Warp Block Bronze? Mm, no. No. Uh, Deathless Metal from P3 smashes Warp Block Bronze to pieces. just a much much better product mate the way it behaves it's um, ability to be thinned without losing any of its vibrancy and power just it's just the way flush most of that out then we're going to add in some scale dwarven gold so that was their viking gold 
So, flow improver in, paint in. Um, can't find that color elsewhere. Fair. Uh, no one's local GSW or Sarvalejo. Um, element, exclamation point element. Get a link there to their website where you can find almost all of the company's paints I've just been talking about. Even Chimera, I think, though. Um, and if you do buy anything through that link, then I get a little bit of a kickback from Element. So, full disclosure, I make some money out of you shopping at Element Games. It costs you no more. And you'll get what you want at a discount because Element sells at a discount. It's where I buy the majority of my stuff from for like large orders. Small bits I get from my local hobby store. Every now and again, I'll have a chat, a, a deal, and I'll, I'll pick up maybe a large order from them. Um, but Element get the majority of my business. So this is a Zenithal highlight. So Zenithal just means like top down. get a nice properly yellowy gold on here um, you have 500 quids worth of oh dude that's all right it's all right you're off the fucking Christmas card fucking God. all the shit I've done for you mate Damn. but thank you mate I appreciate it honestly the crystals is, is great, so use the crystal code because what I use the crystals for is prizes for the stream. So currently, I think there's about 45 quid's worth of element crystals, which just go into giving you guys prizes. So you guys using those links, using those codes and the affiliate codes, Rival Crafts as well, yeah, exclamation point Rival, go and do some shopping there. I was doing some shopping there earlier on tonight, and Halfway through, I messaged Sarah because I couldn't quite get what I wanted. So the shopping trip at Rival is paused for a, a small amount of time while Sarah just creates what I'd like her to create for me. Because she's that fucking good. Fish, don't. Don't. I, I spent... 175 quid on Saturday for the pre-order stuff. Oh, both codexes. We've still got a Marine Army, so why not? Peckish! Hello, matey. How are you? Um, yeah, I bought both codexes. I bought the Necron cards because I want the um, protocols, basically, more than anything else. Uh, then I bought three of each of the two Necron units. Coffee Mouse, thank you for that follow. Uh, doing great, dude, honestly. Literally nothing to complain about at all. Apart from how much this stinks of that varnish. But other than that, you know, we're good. You're about to see some of the sexiest red that you'll have ever fucking seen in a minute. This is that mix of um, gold and silver. Again, just another Zenithal, but a little tighter this time. This is just setting the values for our gold. Obviously, we've got some washes to do. We've got a lot of brushed highlights to do. There's, there's no way that this is the final incarnation of anything. It's just helping us out. Setting our highlight maps, our shadow maps, all that jazz. on them right we're about to go into the whip so exclamation point discord one more time go and get yourself over there show us what you got show us what you've been working on show us what you just finished anything you like miniature related I feel that last caveat was uh, potentially important but oh Dex is 
both cards, Silent King, three destroyers, three walkers, chap and bite. The fuck me, mate. Damn. I like that Judas fish. Oh. Burn. Utter burn. Right. Compressor's off. We've been airbrushing all night so far. It's been a good night. This is the red. That is just... There's so much vibrancy out of that. And because we've done almost everything we've done here from a zenith or style. Look at how dark that is underneath. All the way through the different parts of the red area of the spectrum to that. Yeah. Fucking happy days, right? This is all going next to either Magnus's wings. So I think this one is for... I think this one is for this wing. Yeah. So look at the contrast that we get on that. Uh... Absolutely, mate. Always. But, you know, it, it is what we got without spending thousands and thousands more on uh, photo equipment and lighting is the important part of that, to be honest. So, camera swing with top down. You see a picture on Instagram. It'll happen, dude. It'll happen. But that is just such an amazing red. So the process we went through was starting from a black undercoat, mixing black and blue together before going just into blue. This is a good mid-tone blue, Signal Blue base from P3. Use any other blue that's equally sort of strong. We then worked up to white over three passes by mixing this in with the blue for the first two and then just straight up white for the last pass. Then once that was down, we took some lemon yellow ink and just picked out a few areas to really stand out with that red. Once all of that was dry and we went from something that looked like a trainer to the red by adding on this flame red ink, the Rouge Flamme. Rojo de Fuego. Just adding this very thinly over the top. Because the amount of flow improver we were using and because the ink itself is a little bit shiny, we then took some Tester's Doll Coat, knocked back all that gloss, and that's what's given us this. This beautiful fucking red. Loving it. Right. Let's go check out Discord. Let's see what we've got. So, in the Work in Progress channel, today, here we go. We've got Jamartin. He's been working on his Blood Angels. I get to see these in person on Saturday. Nice bases. That's a rival crafts order right there, obviously. Jager, take it easy, brother. Fish, you and me both, dude. I get this horrible suspicion that when I put it together, it's just not going to quite look right. It should be fine because everything that I've done for it, I've planned out way in advance. And it's coming together the way I want it to. It just says that like little niggling day just there. Those are your last army painter ones. Fair. Fair. But I know the next ones are going to be Rival Crafts, and that's all that matters, mate. Sarah's the best. I'm liking them, dude. Very, very nice. Very vibrant red as well. Not quite what we've done today, but very vibrant red. They're going to be uh, eliminated with some gorse fire at the weekend, though. I'll try and do a, a quick play-by-play -play on Instagram at the weekend of the, of the game. Uh, I wanted to at no retreat, but trying to fucking broadcast anything with a mask on, just not, not happening. Crown Blade's got some toys. All about those steam, steam uh, dwarfs. I don't understand what 
half of this is. But they're cool minis. That's all that matters. They're all just cool minis. Nice, dude. And this is all going to be in your new color scheme, or are you changing things again? Have you got a new, new color scheme? Free, yes. Yes. I actually understood that part of it, but, you know. Rev, mate. Fucking hell. Yeah, it's that that green, man. You've worked up just a, just the right amount of yellow in there to keep it super, super punchy. He's just awesome. I love that little snake you've got on the base as well. Is that a coral snake? Not great with snakes. As in, like, the names of. I, I like snakes enough, but I don't like holding them. Um... She used to see had corn snakes. She made me hold one once, and I stood there petrified. She's like, "Look, it's not gonna hurt you." And I said, "No, I do. And trust me, it's, it's not gonna hurt me. But I'm worried about me hurting it." Uh, looks very cool though. Square base, how avant-garde. The gum line does make a massive difference, mate. It just helps cement everything there in the mouth. It's. It's super good. Super, super good. Got a booty shot. Epic, epic job on that skin, mate. Very, very nice. Yeah, really impressed, man. Well done. Well done. All right, Lee. Oh, look at me. Here's Karma Built B Trainer. Christ, he, he looks fucking sick, mate. That face is super, super well done. It's your 20th mini. Get out, you're banned. Um, dear lord dear lord that's fair if you want to keep the, the glow keep the glow um, I'd still probably just just drop in a little tiny shade in between those cells but you don't it's the, the face the sculpt is shit the sculpt is so fucking terrible. But you've done an amazing job on that. Really, really well done. I like pie. Peace out, man. As we said before, the way you add blood to models is just insane. Yeah. Yeah. Lee is the only person that I see attempt to put blood on, on miniatures on a regular basis that makes it look real. Most people put blood on, it's like a fucking lake has gone on. Or somehow someone's been hit with like a, a tennis ball sized, well, softball sized, uh, like bit of blood splatter. Oh, totally, mate. Totally. Such a great job, mate. Everyone go and follow the Johnsonator on Instagram. I think your Imperial Fist needs a bit of work. Uh, it may just be the camera, but the yellow there looks ever so slightly green. You know, sometimes when you paint yellow over black, you end up with that weird colour. Just got a small element of that for me. Could just be the camera, could just be the lighting. Um, okay, cool. Then check your, so it's probably your white balance. So your white balance is probably set more to blue, which is obviously good for your 
uh, World Eater's color scheme. But the blue obviously then interacts with the yellow in a different way. So try and uh, balance that a little bit, perhaps the other way. But great job, dude. Great job. The mini looks so much better with the helmet, but the face you've done such an amazing, amazing job on. Uh, I get these painted more basic. Yeah, understand that. You know, he's an element on the on the base rather than you know, part of the model, but it's quite a large element on the base as well. You know, you've you've got to give that its due due diligence. So. I'd maybe go a little bit further with it. Certainly, there's no way you'd have a blank shoulder pad. Got to get on that at least. But looking bang in though, dude. There's Alcero. Still whip, need to improve my glazes, trying more of a comic look, he says. Yeah, definitely got that comic book style. Very dark recesses, that's kind of one of the ways you can do that. Really, really dark goes down, like it's a, an Inca that's done it. Um, hey Lee, you you know that shoulder pad needs needs to be done. I like it, dude. It's a bit of a unique colour scheme, but it's not bad. Yeah. Get some highlights going on, on the uh, sort of bluey purple that you've got there. That'll really help. A couple of little details there that can be picked out as well. Keep it up though, man. You've got a lot of voice to paint, I know, so plenty of work for you to do. I'd get a little bit more shade on the red as well. Maybe get a brown ink uh, and just do some of the, the recesses, some of the areas that would be in shadow with that. That help. Looks like Death Shot. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Good spot. All right, quid. Why well, is this eating the whip? Short whip tonight. Uh, clearing out my pile of shame to bang on eBay. Still need to learn how to take a decent pick. That's really nicely done, man. Um, I think you've probably gone a little far with the uh, weathering powder on the front of his, his boots. Um, because that makes it look like he's been wading through, like, deep mud yeah uh, and it's then sort of caked on but everything else is very dry but then the finish doesn't give it the look of wet mud that's then dried that makes sense um, so maybe next time just knock that down a little but that's it the rest of it is pretty fucking good dude love the sword really nice colour against the red Get a nice crisp black base room on there, and then mm, spot on. Uh, redone with some of last week's suggestions. Put it to one side for time being. As if that was rushing bits. Good shout, good shout. So these are the skulls that you have sort of molded more into the the fists. And looks like you've changed position of that one a little as well to make it a little bit more centralized, which is, I really like that. Um, should have done the base of stone slash gray too, but I wanted to test the other improvements so using my using the dam. To be honest, mate, I think the, everyone's very obsessed with having a base that completely contradicts the miniature. And I do it a lot, yeah, so I, I'm aware. But there's nothing wrong with having something that is somewhat harmonious throughout at times especially just on single miniatures yeah. stone grey would have worked but then so I was having this discussion earlier on give me, give me one second let me show you something that's in my whatsapp uh, so bear with this is a painter I've shown his work off on stream more than once he's fucking phenomenal really really good friend of mine and none of that docs is him so we're good 
check this out. What the actual fuck? He's only been painting this for a year and a half. You know. And that's not even the base for it. He just put it on there and went, I'm thinking about this. Like, it's similar to my Necron bases. What do you reckon? Um, and he's never fishing for compliments. He's colorblind, believe it or not. And uh, he literally sees in monochrome as well. Everything shades of grey. Complete color blindness. Um, and so he's frequently asking opinions on whether something's vibrant enough or you know the right shade and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and people say, "Oh, you should do like a ruined base. You should do like an urban base." And everyone was coming up with real world bases. Right? Uh, he has to ask his missus and his kids and read the labels on bottles and stuff. Yeah, he started to obviously he's found a way of coping. He's in his fucking forties, uh, so so he understands like red. Look, this shade of grey is gonna be probably a red, but um, everyone was coming up with with like real world versions of what the base could be. So oh, green fields, um, urban rubble, uh, a desert. Yeah. It's a fucking custode. Why not put him in the webway fighting something? You know? Why not? So the base doesn't have to be kind of desert-y or kind of road-y. Why not do something really fucking wacky? Have it on an Eldar base. Have it on something that's just like shifting through time and space. Like the intro to old Doctor Who. You know. Loads of things that you could do like that with a base. They don't ever need to be necessarily just here's some brown. Yeah, Imperial Palace is, is good, but it's still it's not boring. It's not. But it's still just a bit like Yeah, we've seen that. Why not do something that's a little bit out there? He says, looking at this massive thing that's basically a forgotten temple. So, you know, uh, I'm as guilty as it would be else. But that's it. That's the whip tonight. I think you've done great with this Dreadnought. I, I really like the fact you've tied those skulls in a little bit more than they were. I think that makes a big difference. I hope you're happy with it. Master of Mankind is such a good book as well. So thank you to everyone for joining in tonight. We've had a blast painting some red. We've done a little bit of gold, but basically all we've done is paint red and gold. Don't forget, as always, was the end of the month, exclamation point win and exclamation point mystery, where you could win a prize. You could win a mini painted by me in a color scheme of your choice. Or you could win a 50 pound hobby voucher for the hobby store of your choice. On the next stream, we're going to be carrying on with this armor. We're going to be getting our brushwork done. So that means there's going to be a load of getting our recesses shaded in. Probably going to use oil paints for that. So if you want to see an easy and quick way of getting your recesses done, maybe check that one out. We've got to get a load of gold blocked in as well as this gold, and we've got to build that up to quite an astonishing degree. The gold is a big part of this miniature. But we want to limit it. We want the majority of this to be red with accents of gold and not here is a gold thing with red in the dark bits. Definitely got to be that way around. Lee, thank you very much, brother. Much appreciated. And Daddy Tubbs, I think that's a really, really mature way of looking at it. You know, just put it down, have a rest, come back to it fresh. I like that. Good for you. Let's go see who is streaming is it me or is, is, is twitch seem to be a little quiet at times almost feels like we've got a few people that are like maybe taking a holiday or something and Janelle saying I see you lurking good evening 
Uh, so I thought about ritual casting, but they're hosting somebody else. I'd rather raid that particular person. They're painting a Kingdom Death Phoenix. Apparently Vance is 40. Okay, cool. Let's go raid this person I haven't heard of before then. Boom. Also, I haven't seen any minis in ages. I think she changed her stream times. But anyway, guys, huge thank you for tonight. I'll see you Sunday. We were carrying on with this super, super sick red. Hopefully, between now and then, I'll have done a lot more work on Magnus's wings. And we can start seeing this all start to come together. Peace out, everyone. See you Sunday.